were just having a little chat on the makeup industry and on 2020. So I'm just wondering how everybody feels about all the makeup that we purchase. Do we purchase too much? Some of us maybe. Some of us, uh, others may not think so. Is the makeup industry taking advantage of us with the hyped up consumerism? Maybe how does YouTube play into that? Just some thoughts for discussion today. One thing that I've thought about that I'd like to change in 2020 is I'd like to use cleaner products. Use makeup maybe with less packaging that's more environmentally friendly. But also I think about the need for 15 blushes that are all a shade of pink. So I have this blush and it is kind of an apricot color, right? Then I have the next blush that's an apricot color, but it's a little bit lighter. So I need that one too. And then they came out with an apricot blush that is a little bit more textured. Oh, I better go out and get that one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's another apricot blush, but this time it has a slight shimmer. Gotta get that one too. Look, there's a new apricot blush out, guys. And this one comes in a special edition package. So I don't wanna miss out on that special edition package, even though that color is the exact same color that I already have one of and a backup of in my stash already. Kinda of see what I'm talking about? How many of you are guilty of doing that? I'm not telling you that in 2020, I'm not gonna be buying lots of products to review and to show you guys because I always will. Maybe I'll be a little more thoughtful about what I buy too. So does it offer me something different that I really don't have? Is it something that I just really love? Is it something that I am out of? Is it something that I can review for you guys who might not have so much makeup or so much on this one product, this type of product that you might like it, but then I re-gift it to someone else or to a woman's shelter <coughs> or to the moms at the children's hospital who don't have much time to take care of themselves or pamper themselves. Those are the kind of things that are running through my head. So I'm still gonna be reviewing and I'm still gonna be buying makeup. I'm just wondering, maybe the makeup industry right now has us by the, you do. Anyway, we're gonna just take a fun little riff at this in this video. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, stick around. Maybe give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. Maybe press the subscribe button and let's get into it. We're gonna do a fun get ready with me today. I'm gonna be using some old products and some new products and we're gonna be talking about the makeup industry in general and some things that I think that we need to remember. We're just gonna talk about your makeup dollars. Yes, we're gonna go there how much we spend on makeup and we all have the right to spend as much or as little as we want, right? Right, we all agree there, I am sure. However, I wanna make sure that we are doing it with our eyes wide open. We can only let the makeup industry take advantage of us if we let it. So one thing that I see them do So we have these beautiful dose of color baked brown eyeshadows, right? And you know, your under eyebrow color and a transition color. So we see this and we buy this and we love this. So it's gonna take us a while to hit pan on these. And we're enjoying them. And then something new comes out, same colors, except now it's in this shiny pink package and it is just dropped at Ulta. So we buy it. So now 
we have two of all these colors of browns. Well, one of them, one of them was one eighteenth of a millimeter different in color. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we needed both of these. Okay, okay. So next week, just got my new paycheck. I'm going to the bank to deposit it. And then I get a ding on my phone. Guess what? They just came out with these beautiful brown colors. <gasps> this one's by Urban Decay. Oh no, this one's by Tarte. This one's by Tarte. And look at the packaging. Oh my gosh, it is embossed. Oh, it's so shiny. I love this packaging. I have to have this. Well, I'm only going to put some of my money in the bank this week because now I have these beautiful brown colors. Oh, well, no, I haven't used up all of these. No, I've only used this one twice. But the box, look at the packaging. And it's probably tart. Oh, I have to have it. It's been on 17 videos. Everybody is talking about it on YouTube. I love it. Next week, I'm going to the bank. Just got paid. Guess what's dropping at Sephora? <laughs> this beautiful set of brown eyeshadows. Oh my gosh, it just came out by Smashbox. Look at this, y'all. Oh, it is so gorgeous. And it's on sale. Oh my goodness, I have to be the first one to get it. Yes, yeah, I still have all the browns in that palette. I even have all the browns in this palette. And this palette. But this one's by Smashbox. And two of them have a slightly different shade. These are, I don't know if they're really cooler, but they look a little bit cooler than these do. So I have to have these two. Did I kind of make my point? <laughs> so, I guess if you have the disposable income and you want to buy all of these beautiful brands that look basically all the same, of course, there is no judgment for you doing so. All I'm saying is that don't feel pressured to get all of these products, right? Like, we, how many browns do we need? How many different types of brown do we need? So that's just a question that only you can answer. But I do think that it's a question that it is worth asking ourselves. So I'm going to go in with a primer. This is a hydrating primer by Unicorn Glow. And it is a glowy primer. This is a glowy primer. I have some more glowy primers. I have about seven glowy primers. How many glowy primers do you need? Look. This one's not even open. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, really. It's just making sure that we're not being pressured into getting things that we don't need or that we're not going to use just because a YouTuber says we need it. And maybe we might want it. Maybe it is different. Maybe it is going to meet our need. That's all I'm saying. It's just kind of evaluate what you need, what you have, and how different it really is. That's all. I think that the makeup industry has sort of got us right now. And they are raking in that money that we could probably use many times on something else. Because we could actually do the same thing with the highlighter. So here we have the Ofra Highlighter in Rodeo Drive. This is kind of a champagne gold highlighter. It is very reflective. And I got it, and doesn't it just look lovely? And now they put it in this box, 
and they changed the packaging, but it's still a gold highlighter. Yes, I've never even made a dent in this one, but now I have it by them, and I have it by them, and I have it by them, and I have it by them. And now I have 25 highlighters, all about the same color, that I will not use before my grandchildren who are not even born yet are dead. So I'm just saying, think about it. If it offers something different, if it offers something unique, if it offers something that you need, absolutely get it. Same thing with this clear lip gloss. Oh, this clear lip gloss. This is gonna go on while I am putting on my makeup so that my lips can kind of get unwrinkly. I'm gonna leave that on. 25 other people came out with clear lipsticks, clear lip glosses, sorry. Do I need them all? No. Do I even need every shade of lip gloss? Mm -mm. Is one really all that more magical than the other? Yes, there are different consistencies, there are different textures, there are some that we like more, some that stay on longer. I think you got the message. So as we go into 2020, the last thing that I want to say about maybe what worked and what didn't and how I spent my money is you guys go back and look at that first terrible video that I did when I first started YouTube. And you always know, still think they're terrible, but hopefully they're getting better. Do I look 10 years younger? Do I look 26% younger? Do I look... 18% younger because this said I was going to look 13% younger. This said I was going to look 14% younger. This said I was going to look 26% younger. They said that this would make me look 33% younger. And 47% younger. I still look older than I did when I started. <laughs> So although these things may help and some skincare products definitely make a difference for my skin and I definitely advise taking care of your skin, just be careful about these super powerful claims. So like I said, mostly that was, you know, really just a parody or just really just riffing on some of the things that we do, kind of making fun of myself in the process. But there is some questions to ask about how we spend our money and everybody has the right to spend it how they want. So this is no judgment zone ever. This is never a judgment zone. It's just um, kind of an introspective look at what we buy and how much we buy and maybe just causing us to take a pause before we make a purchase. Like maybe I'll put it in my cart and then I won't check out until the next day. Like I'll sleep on that decision, right? Like they say that we should do with major decisions, but because makeup buying, even in small quantities, I buy so much that it all adds up that maybe I'll sleep on those decisions and say, is this something that people really wanna see? Is this something that's a little bit different? Am I saving them money? Am I bringing them more value? Am I showing them something that's new innovative or something that really does something for their skin or their pores or aging skin. You know, just be a little more selective in my purchases. But we'll still be reviewing and I'll still be here all the time looking at all this fun stuff to play in because I enjoy it. So part of it is just spending money on a hobby that I enjoy just like if I was going watch movies or spending money on dinner or any of those other things. So until the next video, I'm out.